But first, a desperate father sits in a jail cell in Japan this morning, facing a five-year sentence. On Monday, he went to Japan to try to get his children back from his ex-wife, who'd run off with them two months ago. Christopher Savoy's desperate attempt to take back his kids took place as his ex-wife walked them to school. An eyewitness says Savoy picked up the kids in his car and raced to the U.S. consulate to obtain passports. It was here at the consulate Japanese police were blocking the road, so Savoy ran for the gates. Eight-year-old Isaac froze in the street as dad Chris ran with six-year-old Rebecca in his arms. He was there, you know, he had Chris with a little girl in his arms crying. We were saying, please help, please help uh, the American citizens, please let us through. And they simply would not open the gate. They would not uh, let us through. I can't sleep. It's horrible. Savoy has been without eight-year-old Isaac and six-year-old Rebecca since August when his ex-wife took them to Japan on vacation. He later discovered his children were missing when they failed to show up for the first day of school. He blames a Tennessee judge for allowing his ex-wife to leave the U.S. with the kids. He had the power to keep those kids in my life, and he didn't care. Savoy says he'd warned the judge his ex-wife repeatedly threatened to leave for good. Quote, I am having more difficulty staying here, she wrote Savoy in an email. It's very hard to watch the kids becoming American and losing their Japanese identity. It's horrible not having them here. This move puts Savoy on precarious legal grounds. Japan is not party to the 1980 Hague Convention on International Child Abduction, does not see it as a crime. Joining us this morning from Nashville is Christopher's wife, Amy, and here in the studio with me is Patrick Braden, a leading expert on parental abductions to Japan because his daughter was taken there by his ex-girlfriend three years ago. Good morning to you both. Good morning, Maggie. Thanks Good for morning. being here. Amy, let me begin with you. Do you understand why your husband did what he did? Had he exhausted all other options to try to get his kids back? He must have just been desperate because we're sitting there in a house with all of these memories of our children together and his children who love him so much. I know those children love their father. I know those children love their father so much and they must miss their father and she was not not letting us speak to them on the phone. Uh, they were hanging up on him, not letting him speak to his children and when he called the grandparents house he could hear Isaac crying in the background. Mm -hmm. uh, he was crying, I promised my daddy, I promised my daddy and he was too sad to talk. He, so he didn't know how they were doing. So he decides to take matters into his own hands. Patrick, these kids are American citizens, as is your daughter, Melissa. Yes. Were you surprised that uh, the embassy didn't, didn't help? I'm not surprised. Uh, the embassy makes a, the, the State Department makes it a policy to tell uh, American parents of children kidnapped to Japan that don't try to bring your kids to the embassy, but he may not, Chris may not have had that message, message from the State Department. And, uh, I don't blame him at all. I mean, he can have no confidence in the State Department. He can't really have confidence in our government, putting pressure on the, on the government of Japan. Can't have any confidence in the government of Japan. And, uh, you know, the last desperate act uh, when he only trusted himself. And so he, he, it seems that he, you know, made a desperate move. Help us understand the, the frustration for someone in your position and in Chris's position. The State Department has released a statement in this case saying that this is a high priority and uh, they understand it's a problem. But they say, quote, parental child abduction is not considered a crime in Japan. We're eager for our relations to improve on this issue. But Patrick, until relations do improve, is there any option for parents in your situation? There is no option. There's, there's nothing legal that we can do. And, um, you know, there isn't much hope. And the State Department has been saying that same message for a long time, since uh, 1993, as far as I can document. And uh, in the last year, uh, a lot of things have changed in the State Department. The State Department's taken a lot of new action. But, you know, the truth is, if, if the continued actions of the State Department mean that uh, these cases are going to take 10 or 20 years to resolve, we need a new set of plans. We need to innovate new ideas, and the State Department needs to change their tactics. In the meantime, Amy, have you been able to speak with Chris, and do you feel hopeful that you will have him back and the kids back? I hope 
to God that I have him back soon. Uh, I don't know if I'll ever see Isaac and Rebecca again. Um, we hope that if, uh, if she is granted custody over there that they will come and find us when they are in their 20s maybe and um, come see that we still love them and that we miss them and we always wanted to be a part of their lives and I know that they love him. I found this today. Uh, I Isaac drew this for Christopher. What does it say? Um, I'm sorry, I can't see. Uh, a, a year ago, it said, the force is in you, Daddy. Mm. They, they, they have their own little Star Wars language, and they talk about lightsabers, and, and Isaac wrote this, and for some reason, when he wrote it a year ago or so, uh, I saved it, and it's been taped to my closet door ever since. The force is in you, Daddy. Right, Amy Savoy, please do keep us posted on the situation. Thank you very much for taking the time this morning. Thank you.